Hey guys, welcome to the next tutorial. So, nice and easy one this time. We're just going to be adding some sprinting to our character and tidying a few things up. As usual, if you get stuck, the Discord link is in the description. Just go ahead and join and let us know that you need help. Alright, so to add our sprinting, obviously we're just going to go straight into our default input and we're going to add our action here. Um, so the way I'm going to do my sprinting is um, when you hit shift, uh, left shift on the keyboard, we're going to toggle a boolean to true. Um, and if you hit shift again and that boolean is true, we'll just set it to false. Or if you let go of moving forward, um, then we'll set it to false as well. So it's going to be kind of like a hybrid toggle. Um, you'll see what I mean once we get it working. Um, but, but I think uh, it'll give it a nice feel. So again, I'm just going to uh, add, a, add a new action called sprinting. Or actually, it's just called that sprint. New action called sprint, and it's going to be the left shift on the keyboard. Um, I'm just going to click save, let that generate, and then we can go uh, create the boolean for it. All right, so let's go into our player controller script, and we'll just create that that boolean. Um, so we'll just make it a private for now. So private bool and we'll call that is sprinting, just like that. And uh, what we'll then do is obviously just create our function that'll actually set that boolean. So again, we'll have a private void um, and we'll just call that toggle sprint, just like that. And then inside here, we'll just set um, is sprinting equals not is sprinting. So it's literally just going to set it to the opposite value that it's set to, um, which is pretty much what we need. We'll add a few more checks in here once we actually add some stamina in. Um, but for now, that'll be it. So let's go over to our awake and just quickly add in the input listener. So we'll duplicate one of these and then of course instead of prone we're going to use our new sprint and we're going to use our new function called toggle sprint all right now that that's all set up let's just do some cleaning up so you may have noticed now that we have our new crouching system um, we still haven't made it so that you can't uh, jump when you're prone and jump when you're crouched so with these features, every time we add a new feature, we are going to have to go through and make sure that they work with each other. Um, so again, we'll have to make sure our sprinting works with the whole crouching, the proning and the jumping. So um, I'm going to leave this here, um, even if we're not grounded, because um, that shouldn't be a problem toggling sprint when we're in the air. It'll just make us sprint when we're on the ground. Um, but what we are going to do is inside our jump, we're going to add a few more checks. So as well as this is grounded, we're going to add a few more if statements. So let's add another one. And here we're just going to be checking the character stance. So I'll do an if and I'll check our, um, do we call it player stance? Player stance equals player stance dot crouch. So if we try to jump and we're crouched, um, we can either return, um, so if you just want it to ignore the fact that we've jumped, you can leave that here. Or if you want to do what I'm going to do, I'm going to set it to the player starts to stand. That's not stand. <laughs> there we go. So if I try to jump while I'm crouched, it should just make me stand up. So give that a go. If I crouch, try to jump, it just makes me stand. And I can jump. Which is fine, because in a uh, stressful combat environment, uh, last thing I want to remember before trying to jump a fence is that I need to uncrouch before I can jump. So that'll be nice in combat. Um, and then what I'll do is I just want to return uh, if we're prone. So I'm just going to go ahead and add to the statement. So I'll do or, which is these two slashes, which I, for the life of me, can't remember what they're called. Um, but they're to the left of the Z on the keyboard. Um, so what we'll do here is we'll add another check. So we'll say if we're not grounded, 
or player start is equal to prone. That's how you spell prone. <laughs> prone. Then we'll just return. So again, nice and simple. So let's just go into our prone and lay down. So we'll go to our prone, make sure we can't jump. Perfect. All right, so the other thing we might want to reduce is the movement speed for when we're proning and for when we're crouched. Um, so let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to uh, go into our player settings model. Again, you can just click on it and hit F12. Um, and we're going to be adding some stuff to this. So I'm going to have movement dash walking. Oh, movement dash walking. Um, and just above that, let's have movement dash running. Um, and in our new header section, we'll create a public float. Um, and we'll just have this as running speed. Um, or we'll actually, let's have running vertical speed. Oh wait, we're sorry, we've used forward and back here. Let's, uh, we may as well follow. So running forward speed, um, and then we'll have running strafe speed. Cool. Alright, so let's plug these in before we actually go to the crouch and prone speeds. So if we go down, we can minimize awake now, we can minimize jump, and we can minimize toggle sprint. Um, let's just open up our calculate movement. Um, and then what we want to do is right here before we set the movement speed, and probably before we set these variables, we can actually calculate the speed here. So instead of straight up just setting the speed, We'll cal calculate these first. So let's just give it a temporary variable for now. So we'll have var vertical speed equals zero. Um, and let's also have horizontal speed. Okay, so obviously now we have a conflict, which is um, perfectly fine. Uh, what we'll do is, um, instead of creating these variables, so let's put our new variables in place of this variable here. So that's our vertical speed, that's our horizontal speed, and then instead of putting them in variables here, we'll just use the straight up values in the vector 3 below. So I'll pop that inside there, completely get rid of those. Okay, nice and clean. We just need to work out the values for these. Uh, so what we could actually do by default, we could set them to our player settings. Dot walking forward speed. And player settings dot walking strafe speed. Cool. All right, so we're going to do a few checks on the sprinting. Um, so actually right at the top, we'll just quickly add an if statement. Okay. So what we'll do for this if statement is our sprint cancellation. So if we're not holding W or holding the left analog stick forward, uh, we want to cancel out the sprint. Um, so very easy to do. What we can do is just use our input movement dot Y, and we can just check that that is greater than zero. Um, actually, we, we want to check if it's less than or equal to zero, and we'll just add a little margin. So I'm going to say 0.2f. Uh, okay, so if our movement y is less than or equal to 0.2f, we cancel out the sprint. So we'll just set is sprinting equals false. Cool. I'm actually going to copy this and bring it down to our toggle sprint. Um, and I'm just going to paste it in here. So it's going to do the same check. Um, and then after it, I'm just going to add a return. So when we try to toggle our sprint, it's going to check that condition. Um, and obviously if that's not met, it'll make sure it's set to false and it'll exit out. All right, so all that's really left now is to uh, calculate these speeds. Um, so let's firstly do our sprinting. Uh, so we can add an F here. And we can just say 
if we're sprinting, um, then vertical speed equals, um, it's in our player settings, isn't it? Player settings dot running forward speed. Um, and we'll do the exact same thing for horizontal speed. Um, except obviously with our uh, running strafe speed. So the tile is sprinting, we set our vertical speed to running forward speed and horizontal speed to running strafe speed. Cool. When we do add stamina, obviously we will just check our stamina in here. Um, and if we don't have enough stamina, it'll set our sprinting to false. Um, but we'll come back to that when we actually add our stamina in. For now, we're going to have unlimited sprint. So let's just check that that's working. Uh, one thing you're going to notice is um, that our speed transition is instant. Um, and that is something we're going to fix in the next episode. Um, but for now, let's just quickly check that our sprinting is actually working. So we'll make sure we expand our player settings and we have actually given default values to our uh, running forward and running strafe. So just to be able to tell the difference, I'm going to go ahead and set it to very high values. So let's do that and hit play. And it looks like I <laughs> have got these the wrong way around again. Okay, so it's inside our new movement speed, it's our horizontal speed first. And then our vertical speed. That's I swear I did that in like the first episode as well. <laughs> okay, and uh, we don't want to just switch the speed, we also need to switch the uh, axis around. Um, so the first axis is going to be X and the second one is going to be Y. So just make sure horizontal is with input movement dot X and vertical is with input movement dot Y. It's getting too far ahead of myself there. Okay. Now let's just make sure that that works. So I can move back, forward, left and right, good. And then I'll use those cubes for speed reference if I hold shift. Okay, I can definitely sprint. And then let's test that. Yep, I can hit shift again to stop. If I let go of W, sprinting stops as well. Alright, so tidied up a few things, added a quick little sprint, um, but what we're going to do in the next episode is make it so we have different movement speed for when we're crouched, different movement speed for when we're prone, and a different movement speed for when we're in the air. So it'll just create a little bit more of a realistic feeling all around. Um, and then after that, we're going to move on to our weapon and actually start doing um, some really cool things. So again, thank you for all those that's following along. Uh, join the description if you need some help, and thank you for watching.